In this video, we're going to cover nucleophilic aromatic substitution, or SNAR. In SNAR reactions, we can have a nucleophile look like it's doing an SN2 reaction on a benzene ring, as shown in this bottom example, but this does not go through an SN2 mechanism. If you recall from Chem 2300, we cannot do an SN2 reaction on an sp2 hybridized carbon. So this carbon here is sp2 hybridized. So that means it cannot do an SN2 reaction. No SN2 reaction is possible because we have that sp2 hybridized carbon. We can, however, do a nucleophilic aromatic substitution, or SNAR reaction, where the nucleophile can attack the carbon that is attached to the chlorine, or the leaving group here, and then we push electrons onto the benzene ring. This can happen for two reasons. One, the chlorine, or the leaving group, is very electron withdrawing and is going to pull away electron density. So the carbon that's, that we have our nucleophile attacking is very electron poor. Number two, we have a strongly electron withdrawing group. So our nitro group is a strong electron withdrawing group and is gonna help stabilize the negative charge on the benzene ring. Let's explore this reaction a little bit more. We have some more examples here. In these examples, you can see that we have hydroxide reacting as our nucleophile. And what's interesting about these examples is that we have more uh, progressively more electron withdrawing groups, and that's going to make our reaction conditions less and less harsh. In the first example, we have hydroxide at a pH of 14, 160 degrees. When we add an electron withdrawing group, so the next one has an additional nitro group, we can drop the pH and drop the temperature and still get the reaction to work. And in the last example, we have three electron withdrawing groups. And again, we can drop the temperature and the pH and the reaction still works. So the more electron withdrawing groups that you have, the easier this reaction is going to go. What happens in this reaction is our hydroxide is going to attack at the carbonyl carbon. The electrons come onto the benzene ring. That negative charge on the benzene ring is going to be stabilized by an electron withdrawing group. I'm going to draw the intermediate here that we have after the addition of the hydroxide. Then the negative charge is going to come in, kick out the chlorine. And that's going to give us our product. The product, you notice, has an acidic phenol So the HCl step is needed to protonate it, otherwise it'll exist in the deprotonated form. Okay, this slide shows the mechanism in a little bit more detail. So first you can see the nucleophile attacking that carbon that's attached to the electron withdrawing group or our leaving group here, and the electrons are going on to the benzene ring. And you can see the complex that's formed has the negative charge stabilized by the electron withdrawing group. This is called the Meisenheimer complex, and this is the complex that is critical to the nucleophilic aromatic substitution mechanism, and this is showing why that electron withdrawing group is important. After this step, we can then do the nucleophile elimination. The electrons are gonna come in and then kick out the leaving group, and then we do a proton transfer. So we're just gonna deprotonate that nucleophile to get to our product. I'd like to show this slightly in a different way. So let's draw out our resonance structure of the Meisenheimer complex. And then the other thing that you can see is that you can swap the proton transfer and the nucleophile elim elimination steps. So let's look at that. 
Okay, let's draw this out just a little bit differently. So first of all, let's redraw our Meisenheimer complex. So I want to show you a couple of different things about this Meissenheimer complex. So one, let's draw the resonance structure. We can push that negative charge up onto the oxygen. And this resonance structure shows why that Meisenheimer complex is so important because we can have this extra resonance where we can push the negative charge up onto the nitro group. Notice that we're not going to get this effect if we have the nitro group in the meta position. You wouldn't be able to push the negative charge up onto the nitro group. So it's important for that nitro group or whatever strongly electron withdrawing group that you're using to be in the ortho or and or para positions. Okay, so let's go back. The other thing that I wanted to show is we can switch up these steps. So for example, we can do the proton transfer step first. This makes a little bit more sense to me because then we're taking out the chlorine, which is the better leaving group. The other way we had it drawn, it was a little bit confusing because you had a positive charge in the nitrogen and it looked like we were kicking that out. So this is another way that you can get to that same product. Okay, let's look at an application of the Snar reaction. This is showing you Sanger's reagent. Sanger's reagent is shown here on the left. Sanger's reagent is used for detecting the N-terminal residue of a peptide sequence. What happens here is the amine can attack this carbon here. The electrons go onto the benzene ring. So this is a Snar reaction. And then the resulting intermediate would then kick out the fluorine. And you will end up with the product shown down here. After this, you can go ahead and hydrolyze the peptide sequence. And then you would be detecting this portion here. Of course, the amide would be hydrolyzed to a carboxylic acid. And you could figure out what that piece is. And that will help you determine what the end terminal end of your peptide sequence is. So this wraps up nucleophilic aromatic substitution.